And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Talia Sejuani. This one looks like it's going to be an exciting one. This deck's going to be about buffing up the units in our deck and making them very large. And also playing some cool landmarks and having some overwhelm and just doing a bunch of, you know, a bunch of small stuff like that. So basically what we have here is we have uh, a big a big part of our deck's going to be Starless Seer. So this Starless Seer says whenever you cast a spell, Grant the top ally in your deck plus one plus one. All right, and we're going to be pairing that with some lucky finds. So we, we're going to have Inner Sanctum and Payday to be able to create lucky finds. And basically, lucky finds allow us to um, pick a buff from among three to grant an ally. So we're able to buff up our allies that you know maybe already have overwhelm, or if not, we can give the allies overwhelm. But you know that kind of stuff. Now, what's what's really cool here is that lucky find counts as two spells. Whenever you play lucky find. That's one spell, and then whenever you pick the buff, you play the buff also, and so it really counts as actually playing two spells. And so therefore, that's two spells for Starlet Seer. Now, whenever you have a card like Payday, Payday is a spell that says create a lucky find that's also a spell, and then the buff is a spell. So this counts by just spending two mana, you get lucky find, you get a buff, and you get three <laughs> three things for Starlet Seer with just one card. So that's pretty awesome. So that's kind of what our deck's about, like Starlet Seer, Payday, Inner Sanctum. Um, yeah, so we get to buff up the stuff in our deck. We got Xenotype Researchers in here granting three random allies in our deck, plus three, plus three as well. Then we have Battling Bureau that can help us draw those. All right, so if we're if we're making some um, allies in our deck really big, well, we need to find them. So we'll have Battling Bureau be able to draw them. Battling Bureau will also be able to draw Ruin Runner and Sejuani. Both Ruin Runner and Sejuani already have Overwhelm, so if we do end up buffing either of those, they're going to be you know really big and then difficult for our opponent to stop. We also have Talia in here because we are playing a good amount of landmarks. We either have card advantage landmarks like Preservarium, we have uh, Predict, which could be really nice if we're buffing stuff up with the Ancient Preparations. We have the uh, the Three Sisters in here. It's just a really nice um, combat trick. But then also Ancient Hourglass. Ancient Hourglass can help save one of our allies. Or we can just use it proactively. And this is something I just don't do enough of in the Talia decks whenever I play Hourglass. I try to save Hourglass for like protection. But what I think what I need to do more, more often is just take a big unit. You know, take it like a Talia or a Sejuani or whatever. You know, whatever we buffed up a whole lot. Ancient Hourglass it. And then go with the Talia to copy the Ancient Hourglass, and then in one turn, they'll both go away and you'll get two copies of the same one. So, right, so, like, maybe we buff up, like, a Xenotype Researchers that's, like, a 10-10 because of Starless here and stuff, right? And then we can just, you know, uh, Ancient Hourglass it, <laughs> Talia, copy it. Now we have two of those 10-10s. Uh, let's see. That's that's kind of our deck. We got Blight Ravine for some interaction. Battle Fury will help us finish games by just, you know, smashing really hard with a plus 8, plus 4. Um, and that's kind of about it. I guess... I'm a little worried about this ancient preparations. I didn't think about this before, but if we if we because if we if we go Starless Seer and we're we're buffing up something like our top ally in our deck, if you play ancient preparations, it's gonna like when you predict and choose a card, it shuffles all the rest. So whatever we were buffing up could get like sent to the bottom of the deck. So that's actually kind of a nombo. But oh well, hopefully it won't affect us too bad. All right, anyway, let's go Talia Sejuani. Let's have some fun. Let's go play our five games in ranked. Yeah, huge, big Ruin Runners and Sejuani's. That's definitely going to kind of be the plan. I'm not sure if you have Starlet Seer in play and if you're bu buffing something. And then if you if you play the Predict card, but you choose Skip, I'm not sure if it just, when you choose Skip, if it just keeps them all the same or if it shuffles them. I don't know. That one's gone and you can be gone too. Let's keep the double sentry. But good amount of card advantage here, as you can see. Sentry, Preservarium, a bunch of things that say draw. Nothing escapes my watch. Ezreal decks usually have lots of targeted removal. Avros and Sentry good against targeted removal. What do you make of that? I'm not sure. And I, I love playing the Xenotype Researchers as early as possible. That's a great iterative improvement. Give me a weapon, I'll give it firepower. Let's 
Skipyard. Cool. <laughs> Going infinite with battling Bjergs. Exactly awesome. Oh man. This is gonna be not not good for me. That's gonna be a lot of damage. Yeah, it's not gonna be good for me. I'm just gonna let this happen. I know I could ancient hourglass it, but um, I'm gonna save that ancient hourglass. Double Funsmith, it's not going to be good. Yay, Starless here. Mm. Ancient things trapped in the ice. We are drawing a lot of cards. What? That's crazy. So crazy. Double Funsmith with, with me like not having removal. I guess. Blessed by snow and stars. Battling Beer gives a summon, so we will draw an additional card whenever it comes back into play. What does it mean? I don't love this, but I can't I can't see her take all this damage with double funsmith. Sorry, Star, let's see her. That's not bad. I'll take that. They should definitely wait until after I, I challenge, right? Oh no! Hexcore Foundry, I already I already draw way too many cards. Oh no. Well let's try to buff some stuff up, I guess. Yeah, I'm already drawing a lot. That's a great Hexcore Foundry for them, right? Because I'm I'm over here drawing millions of cards. Anyway. Who goes there? I have to block this 8-5. So this is worth four abilities for the Starless here. Yeah, I'm gonna have two lucky finds next turn anyway. This would be a good winter. Or it's worth six, sorry. Which one am I buffing? I guess I buff the one that's not necessarily just going to die. Plus one plus one or spell shield. All right, I guess we'll go with the spell shield. Because, yeah, we got... So this Xenotype Researcher got that plus six, plus six. That's new. You're provoking it. Man, our things are big. Alright, so they didn't play anything. Is Overwhelm an option? This would be a good winter. Bow to no one. Alright, so in, in case of ruination, these now both have spell shield. Alright. Well 
no spell shield. We'll go with the tough. <laughs> nine nine tough. Our things are buff. Time for a true display of skill. Um So th like this is kind of a problem, right? Because I I would love to frostbite that for a round, but even if I do that, like with, with that being at five out of six, it's it's really bad. Because they all they have to do is just one target. And now Ezreal's leveled up, and now it goes back to one power, so now it gets a strike and make an, a Mystic shot again. But I would still save four life in that scenario. And I am pretty dead to this Ezreal, but they they got really lucky with Xenotype Researchers, right? Because they, they made my Xenotype Researchers and, you know, hit three things, and two of them they drew really quickly with an Ezreal and the... Face Melter dude. They got real, uh, real fortunate. Xenotype researchers. I'm glad that's not going to my Nexus. But I guess they have to target something. So yeah, I guess, I guess that was the only card in their hand that targeted. Or Thermo, but Thermo, yeah, Thermo just doesn't make sense to play. Um, all right, well, let's predict. Put a 5-7 Talia. I like 5-7 Tal Talia. I don't like Mystic Shot. Can see the Nebastian border from here. That heal four is clutch. Because I feel like, you know, I, obviously I could open an attack, but I feel like, like there's a chance that they just, you know, like throw spells at me and kill me, right? So, like, that heal four is pretty clutch. Yeah, like, that's... I was definitely worried about that, of just, like, you know, Ezreal killing me. And then I'll just cover this up. I don't want this blighted ravine. I don't want that thing to deal two to everything, so I'll just get rid of it. Let the show begin. Man! <laughs> They did great with Xenotype Researchers, all three of them, within like 10 cards. That's okay. All right, let's get get you out of here. Pick an allied landmark, it doesn't really matter. And that's the only allied landmark. So My board's full, it doesn't matter. So there we go. I think that should be a win for us. Yes, it is. So that that heal four, pretty clutch. The Claw All right, that was good. GGs. Ooh, Zoe of Helios. Yeah, we don't. We can't really block elusive, so Zoe could be pretty rough, and then we don't have removal, so Helios could also be rough. So both those champions. I hope they don't have. I hope they don't have either one, basically. <laughs> Alright, we'll keep one, two, three, five. And Sejuani would have to be a turn seven play. Let's maybe just go re double researchers on turn three, turn four. Oh, but Starlet's here. You so good, too. What do you make of that? I'm not sure. So I could go Preparation, Starlet's here next turn so that I could have Talia copy Preparations. They forced us to choose death or play. You cannot hold us down. Please, no Aphelios. Just, like, pass. Pass. No, that's Aphelios. Man, they even have the golden Aphelios. Gross. Hey, really popular wizard? Yeah, we got the first one. Yuck. 
Alright, so they are playing box to puss. So I'm gonna go with Starlet Seer. So that I have Troll Champ for box to puss. Oh, so now they show you the. That's new. They show you the moon weapon now. That's new. But this is definitely the messed up start. The turn three of Elios, turn four of Veil Temple. If you don't have removal, which we don't, kind of good. Good luck. Interesting reaction. I'll make a note. <laughs> Every game against the Felios makes me want to quit this game. Yeah, I understand. I would have had much more enjoyment in my life over the last few months if they did not print the card Aphelios. It's just like randomly, like they just like, hey, you know what? This month we're just gonna print the the least fun card possible. We're just gonna make this set with just this one champion in it. Oh well, we we tried. We tried to do something cool, but Aphelio says no fun allowed. Oh, yeah, 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 the, yeah, I could, I was, yeah. The Aphelios nerf wasn't a nerf. Like, the, the card's not any different whether it's a 3-3 or a 3-2. Like, sure, it can die just a tad bit easier. That doesn't, that doesn't change the effect, effectiveness of the card. You can make it a 2-2, it's the exact same card. It's, the card's not about power and health, right, of, like, why it's so good. Like, it. Just like why Twisted Fate's so good at a 2 2 also. Like, it doesn't. Yeah. Good job, Patek. Patek says, I'm in Diamond today. Thanks for your videos. Good job. Way to go. Like, maybe, maybe like this kind of. Like, this is the kind of aggro deck that could be okay against the Felios. Like, where you're going to be. have huge overwhelm things. And have, like. and have removal with, like, the cheap vulnerable. This is this is what the kind of deck that can got yeah, big overwhelm and you have to, and you have to be able to kill Aphelios. So you got to be able to do those two things. Okay, how do we win this matchup though? It'll be tough. I want things that affect the board earlier. We had a good Talia hand, but a lot of it was just us kind of spinning our wheels. And not really doing anything. It's not a Blighted Ravine matchup, but this is a Ruin Runner matchup. I'm going to skip that. I was hoping to find something to play here on this turn three. On the trail. Watch me. Eyes blazing, brightest torches. The stories were true. Well, that's pretty lucky. First turn in Rage Eddy. This is looking a lot more like a Blighted Ravine matchup <laughs> than what I let on.
what you want without mercy. I guess I don't have to, like, this of course is a pretty good Sejuani turn, but killing stuff does just let them play other bigger things. Maybe I don't kill stuff. No, not looking good. I really wish that life steal was something you could find with the payday, with the lucky find. That would be pretty awesome. Maybe they won't have Aphelios. Maybe no Aphelios. Is that possible? That'd be nice. Um, I like that we have turn two Starless here. I like that card a bunch. Uh, really hope no, no Zoe, no Aphelios. Don't know exactly what their deck looks like with no Zoe and Aphelios. Lucky find gonna do very much. Lucky find can give like challenger. These kind of champions do just kind of make it impossible to play decks with no with like very little removal, which is. Kind of what Talia decks are, right? Like, you know, because you had to have all your landmarks, everything. They show why, why you can't play decks that don't have removal unless you like hit extremely hard, really fast. But who knows? Maybe, maybe no Aphelios. If if there is no Aphelios, we have a chance. Like, no Aphelios in the game, not like this turn. I'm not really expecting Aphelios this turn anyway, but I meant like the entire game. No, Elusive, Elusive and... Elusive's not an option. Elusive and Lifesteal are not an option, and those would be like the... Those would be like the things that we really want. Which is... Unfortunately, we, our kind of deck would love Elusive and would love Lifesteal. But they don't have those as options. I'm not really sure why. It really hurts us that they aren't options. But I don't really know. I guess, like, do they think that that's going to make these things too good? I don't know. Yeah, Charles says, don't get mad if you lose. It's tier one versus tier three. And yeah, I, I, I understand. And I'm not mad. I'm more sad than mad. <laughs> I'm sad. Like, playing against a fellow, like, whenever you're trying to do something fun and interesting, playing against a Felios is really sad. And it's it's just disheartening. It's like getting kicked in the gut having to play against a Felios. Because it's, it's just much too good of a card to do anything any you know, like if you try any kind of like fun nonsense you just you just can't with how how good this card is that old trick again. Targon was already the best region Zoe was like the best champion before Aphelios and it's just it's just absurd now Fight. 
So the Zoe's gonna level up. It's at eight. But if Helios is still better, still have to kill it. The Zoe probably levels up even if I targeted it. So we really have to try to kill a Felios. Oh, I would, yeah, I'll play against aggro with this kind of deck all day. Like the, uh, the big overwhelm aggro can be pretty tough, but like, you know, you, aggro has a fail rate at least, right? Like aggro isn't awesome, you know, they don't have perfect hands all the time. All you have to do is just cast the card of Felios and then you have a perfect hand. Okay. We got to kill Ophelios. So the game can continue. So we'll see what happens. Um, no, I mean, this, this deck's good enough to play in ranked. I'm okay playing in ranked. It's playing in when you play in normal, you still play against the top tier decks. I play against plenty of Zoe and Ephelios in normal, also. It, it doesn't really change the type of deck you play against. Uh, yeah, you play a lot of the, you, like, you just play the same decks in normal, also. <laughs> yeah, even like Sharimo is really well designed, too. I think that every single region was really well designed except for Targon. I think I just. I'm very disappointed what they did with Targon. And just the power level that Celestials have. And just the card advantage that everything has. It's... Yeah, they did fix Nab. Like, Nab was kind of a little... Like, Nab was a little messed up to start with. But Nab wasn't... Nab wasn't this. Like, let's just sit around and watch somebody take forever on like every single card okay i got like five things i got to choose from all right next card we we invoke we got three things we got to choose from and like let's just play for an entire hour and we'll never possibly ever run out of cards because we just always have like perfect perfect card selection every single card like that's not you know like this this is just not reasonable to have in a in a card game just everything has not only amazing card advantage but card selection where you get to just it's just every game is just when you when you play Aphelios and Celestials, it's just what is your opponent playing? Okay, you just make your deck perfect against what your opponent's playing every game. And that's not an enjoyable experience to play against. See? Like, what do you want? Okay, well, Gravitum's perfect here. It's you know, like like they just chose Gravitum. Like what what's the perfect out of five things to do? Okay, we'll go do that. Yeah, like they're playing like Ascension over here. They're playing a deck building game. Weird decisions. Glad that star shaping's gone. Oh, why can't I have one more mana? So I can play this this thing. I just have I'm just gonna try to tease them out with Battle Fury and hope they don't have like hush. That's another really fun Targon card to play against. Guide 
games. We're not we're not winning a late game. Okay, there we go. Believe in the heart of the cards. Heart of the cards. Cheese them out. We can handle two guiding touches. We can handle one star shaping. They have a star shaping, so now they need they need a hush or a guiding touch. Hopefully neither. And that's game. That's game. Okay, they got one draw. Nope, don't find it. That's game. No, spell thief. I should have played Ancient Hourglass last game, not Troll Chant. Like last turn. I could have I could have Ancient Hourglass and saved the 2-3 instead of Troll Chant. I guess I didn't play around Spell Thief. Just have everything. Not playing against Targon, so can't complain. Um, we'll keep the Sentry and look for some other kind of cheaper stuff to go along with it. Okay, okay. Azir's Emperor deck should just be Targon cards. Basically. Alright, we got a lot of expensive stuff. Let's go ahead and Xenotype Researchers again. I know this is a good time for Babbling Beard, but let's go and do that again. Yeah, because we want to play these cards as early as possible, give us the better chance of drawing them. This does also uh, leave me with the two spell mana for Ancient Hourglass, so that's nice. I don't mind, yeah, like I would I would much rather play against Twisted Fate Fizz than Aphelios any day. Because at least Twist of Fate Fizz kills you, like, on turn 7. So that's not too bad. Got double xenotyped. Bad news. All right, I like the troll chant. So it really looks like our deck like just needs removal spells, right? Like that's what it really looks like the weakness of our deck is. Not playing removal. Yeah, I can't. Excuse us. 
How is this thing? Oh, because those things all strike for an additional point. All right. Well, maybe maybe you just can't you can't just not be able to kill stuff. Okay, so we saw we saw our weakness with our deck of not being able to kill things that you need to, and that's the thing with like these champions, like your Twisted Fates, your Aphelios, your Zoe. There are some champions that you just um, can't allow to stick around in play. Um, Blighter Ravine, not going to be good enough. It's going to be just kind of too slow, and the teal deal to to everything isn't uh, you know isn't um, effective at like killing things you need to. It's not reliable. That kind of stuff. I don't think that the Blighter Ravine really fits in here. Um, I think that, and this was something that uh, the person that made this deck kind of talked about was, you know, they, they went Talia, wasn't sure if like Talia was the best way to go, and um, and it didn't look like it. Talia really didn't look too good. I think that I think that there is something here though with like just like Freljord and Sharima, and um buffing up all your stuff i think there was some cool stuff here and we had some go good card advantage but like like lucky finds with starless here i think there is some stuff there but i i do think that it's probably you probably want to go renick you know renekton instead of talia where you know we can have even more overwhelm and then then we need some challenge right i think that that's what we need we need like these kind of vulnerable cards like your exhaust and your ruthless predator and that kind of stuff and that then then you can um you know have you can hit harder you can also have cards that that kill your opponent's stuff i think that's what that's kind of what we were missing there um and so then we can just kind of get rid of this um get rid of these i i didn't really like any of these landmarks <laughs> honestly we can just kind of get rid of all this landmark stuff um get rid of this card yeah we don't really need preservarium so we can, you know, kind of get rid of like the landmark stuff and have like Renekton with and like our, you know, have have like our big, you know, because we want to take advantage of like these big bodies that like we're making. And so being able to have give give our opponent stuff vulnerable um, seems like that's that's kind of seems like what we need to be doing. So let's go with like Exhaust, Ruthless Predator, um, these kind of cards. Yeah. And then make make large bodies. And then Omen Hawk will help with that. We could go Ruthless Predator, or sorry, Ruthless <laughs> Ruthless Raider. We could go with Ruthless Raider with our Ruthless Predator. Three Sisters, kind of slow. Troll Chant, probably got to play a third one of those. But yeah, maybe something like this. Maybe, you know, maybe just kind of switch it up and, uh, you know, take out the Talia and the Landmark stuff. Go full bore with the Overwhelm and with the buff Overwhelm and Vulnerable. That could be kind of cool there. There's maybe like a spell or two here that, that I'm missing. Yeah. And so maybe there's a couple of other cards around the edges. Yeah, you know, like this is just kind of a, a quick change out. But I think that something like this could could kind of give us a, a better op better option here. But but I think there is something there with Starlet Seer and Lucky Find and Payday and Lucky Find. I think there is something there. And then, you know, like with Xenotype Researchers, Babbling Bjerg, like that, that looks great. Like, Z Z like Researchers looked really good for us. Bjerg looked really good for us and like, you know, just drawing things that we buffed up with researchers was really nice because like, you know, sometimes we drew just like 8th, 7th century right from like two researchers. Then we just Bjerg and, and found that. So I thought that was all pretty cool. And then, yeah, get, get Renekton in here um, and then be able to kill those uh, champions or, or you know, like, like that last game. I know it wasn't the champion. Well, there was the Azir, which was a champion that we needed to kill, but then also just like that 2-3 that buffed up all those ephemerals. That was something you just have to kill, right? Like, so there's a lot of allies and units like that, I guess enemies and units like that that you just have to kill, and so Vulnerable could work. Okay, um, but uh, there we go. So there's Talia Sejuani. Um, you know, it did, didn't work out, just didn't have the interaction, but uh, there's, there's something here, and so maybe kind of going with this route with Renekton Sejuani could be pretty cool so i recommend trying that out um Sivir is another option if you want to go with that over i i like the just how reddington has overwhelm and also gets a lot bigger whenever we challenge for this stuff but Sivir is an option with the inner sanctum and the payday where you can try to give Sivir overwhelm and then like if you can you know obviously if you level up Sivir, you have like that whole stuff too but i think that reddington would probably be better for this but that's another option 
if you like that card. All right, but those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Hopefully y'all learned some stuff. Hopefully y'all enjoyed the videos. Sorry, sorry about me complaining about Aphelios. If you don't like that, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all I got here. So leave those comments. Let me know what you think of this new version or if you got like any ideas, if you were impressed with Starless here, Lucky Find, anything like that. Um, I'd love to love to see that. All right, but that's all I got here. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.